Hey guys, it's CL, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I make brand new Critical Role recaps every Monday at noon, and I would be happy to have you join the party. If you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe and hit the Bertrand bell to be notified when new stuff goes up. Now let's delve into the subject at hand. Death and Critical Role. There will be spoilers for all three campaigns, so be warned. Death is one of those interesting things in life that we all go through, whether we'd like to or not, and is the great unknown but overwhelming aspect of the human experience. So of course, it will be a concept taken on in media and culture and Dungeons and Dragons is no different. Personally, I think death is part of what makes the show fun. There's always something on the line, something to lose. I don't know if you could tell a cohesive story without incorporating loss in some way through the narrative or even in the backstory, but how is it present in Critical Role? In Campaign 1, there were 15 character deaths throughout the home game and into the streamed series. The first ever death being Pike, where I think the players were introduced to the concept and realized just how deep this can go besides some fun accents and stealing shit. Most losses were hard. We'd tune in to watch ritual castings and just hope and pray that the victim would return from the afterlife. It's a mechanic I really like because it adds stakes. It's not just one spell that's a cure-all for the annoyance of dying. There's a chance that they could fail. They could lose their loved one forever. Though sometimes these deaths would be some of the greatest moments in the show's history, not for how deep or drama fueled it is, but actually the laughter they bring. Keyleth goldfishing off of a cliff, Artagon choking out Vaxeldon. All of them are moments that brought tears to my eyes, not because of sadness, but just immense giddiness. Campaign 1 was also the first time we permanently said goodbye to a character. Vaxeldon was such a strange case. We all knew it was coming, it was like watching a timer on a clock expire. And seeing him fade away was one of the few times at that point that I had sobbed from a TV show like a little girl who got her pigtail pulled. But after he was gone, there was only an epilogue. We didn't have to feel the gap, the absence for too long. We knew he was okay. Even if we didn't like where his destiny as fate touched led him, he still knew there would always be a piece of him around. Whether he's greeting you and leading you towards your next path, or whether he's a raven on the shoulder of a grieving woman. In Campaign 2, death wasn't as common of an occurrence in the main storyline. If you're counting the fucky wuckiness of Molly Mock, there were six player character deaths through the entirety of the Mighty Nine's run. That's astounding to have that little over 141 episodes. But don't get me wrong, the subject is still intensely tied to the narrative. You have the story of Caleb and his parents, there's Yasha and her past as the orphan maker. Death is still a very real and heavy subject throughout the campaign. Campaign 2 also was a whole new beast after the loss of Molly Mock. It was the first time they were too low-leveled to bring them back, and it was the first time the cast had to watch another player step away and come back as someone new. We sat with the loss of Molly for nearly, what, 40 or 50 episodes before their return is Lucian? That was a long time to come to terms with what it's like to lose a character. It led to some awesome things. Watching Bo's entire arc shift and change because of losing someone she, dare I say, didn't really get along with, was so interesting. It allowed her to live life to the fullest and try to change to make the world a better place. Now that leads us to Belle's house. We're only 35 episodes in at the recording of this video, and have so far watched Raishan level amounts of terror during the fight with Orohan. We lost three, only one still yet to be revived, and that's Ladna. I think the reason I really wanted to make this video and talk about it is what it's like losing your favorite character. I haven't really experienced that before, if I'm honest. Authors and writers and directors don't usually go for the most beloved beings in their worlds. The kill off side characters, or characters you'll miss, but you won't be too distraught by. Critical Role and D&D in general is different. Anyone is up for grabs. They're playing high-risk, high-reward situations. The dice don't care whether you're beloved. I've taken losing Laudna pretty hard. These past couple episodes have been some of the best Bell's Hells have put out so far. 
but I'm just waiting, watching that timer until it goes off, just hoping that when you hear that annoying dinging sound, she'll be back with us. I want to know in the comments what fictional character you've taken hardest. I'm really curious if any of your favorites have gone the way of Laudna and what your reaction was. If you haven't already, don't forget to like the video and check out my recaps for Campaign 3. I also have an album called Scorpio that's out now, and I look forward to next Thursday. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe out there. Good day, my friends. Scorpio.